Bible says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent the messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. And went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake, made of coals, and a jar of water. So he ate and he drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time. Someone say a second time. And he touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and went in his strength of the food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb to the mountains of God. That's enough. I want you to tell your neighbor today emphatically, I'm getting tired of this. You may have your seat in the presence of our Lord. I'm getting tired of this. Somebody in here might even have enough nerve to look at somebody and say under their breath, I'm getting tired of you. When we think about being tired, we've all been at a point in which we are ready to throw both our hands up and say, you know what? I'm so tired of this. What happens to be your this today? What is it that you are tired of? Some people today are getting tired of the way sin is raging in this world. Some people thinking Scott may say that I'm tired of simply senseless shootings happening at an alarming rate. Senseless officials fueling the fire of hidden racism that now has a license to take their mask off. I'm getting tired of this. I'm getting tired of having all these health issues. I'm getting tired of taking one pill to remedy one thing and then having to take two pills because of the issues that one pill gave me. I'm all getting tired of always having to be the bigger person. I'm getting tired, Brother Keith, of always having to turn the other cheek. Y'all can talk back to me today. I'm getting tired of being the one that always got to submit. The Bible says that we got to submit one to another. How come I got to be the one that submit all the time in our relationship? I'm getting tired of living up to other people's expectations. Being tired of friends that can lead to discouragement. When you get tired of people today, I want you to understand that, that, that at some times you get tired of living up to other people's expectations because you forgot who you really are. You can continue to live for what other people want you to do and you don't even have an identity. Lord, I want to help us today that that will make you tired. Being tired today, friends, leads to discouragement. Discouragement is emphasized as we exegete a text today that Elijah was a man of God. Elijah was a prophet, a, a prophet who, who, who spoke to the people on behalf of God. He was a prophet that had a word that you didn't have to give him no money for. All right. All right. He was a prophet that if he said it's not going to rain, it's not going to rain. Right. Moreover, when it didn't rain, he had to stay in the same climate that he prophesied over. Right. 
I can't come to Detroit and fly back to Atlanta and bring you a seed, bring you a word and you give me a seed. If God told me to tell it, I gotta live through it. Elijah had just come off of Mount Carmel and, and, and he had told the land that it wouldn't rain for three long years. Y'all know the Bible. I want you to read chapter 17 up to 20 when you go home that it's not going to rain for three years. And, and Elijah got a new word from the Lord. The Lord says, go back and tell them that it's going to rain. I need you to tell your neighbor it's going to rain. Sometimes the Lord will put a word in your mouth that people around you can't understand. It's going to rain. But on his way of giving that message, he had something. He had to let them know that I'm going to take all your false prophets and I'm going to prove to y'all who the real God is. That I want all y'all to do what y'all normally do. And we're going to take two bullocks. We're going to sacrifice them. Y'all go first. Y'all go first and y'all cut up that bullock. And I need y'all to call on Baal and call on whoever else you call on. And Elijah sat back and he waited and watched them do their thing. Can I tell the story real fast? So in the context of the story, they were, were, were calling on the name of their God. Can somebody say they ain't talking to nobody but the ceiling? Elijah looked upon them making a bunch of noise, looking for their God to do something, but nothing happened. So they got frustrated. Now, Elijah said something like this, as I paraphrase. Well, maybe you need to yell a little louder. Maybe your God is asleep. And the Bible says that they started jumping around and yelling and, and turning around and declaring that, that sometimes people can fill your head with so much gibberish that you will look foolish calling on somebody that the Bible never told you to call on. So I want you to understand what Elijah did. Elijah says, now it's my turn. So it's my turn to rebuild the altar and to, to cut up my bullock and put my bullock on the altar. But I want you to go a little deeper. I want you to, 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 to cut a trench around the altar. And I want you to do what I ask you to do. I need you to pour water on the altar. Not once. I need you to pour altar on the wall, water on the altar twice and three times. Enough to where the trench was filled with water. And the Bible says that Elijah said these words. Lord. I ask you to do something, not just so that you can show who you are. Watch this. I need you to do something so they can know who I am. The Bible says that fire came down from heaven and licked up all the water and the sacrifice. And everybody knew that God Jehovah is real. Somebody say amen in here. Now, according to the word of God, because they were a prophet and they falsified in their prophecy, now they were subject to the sword. Can I teach Bible today? The Bible says that Elijah said, put your hands on them false prophets and bring them to me. And the Bible says Elijah killed 450 prophets by the sword. And then Elijah was feeling good about himself. Can I help you understand the life of a preacher? Life of a preacher that he gave a word and the Lord responded and the people saw the move of God but something happened in the parking lot that after he went into the parking lot feeling good about what just happened on Mount Carmel Ahab went home and told Jezebel about the message Jezebel didn't come to church but Jezebel met the prophet in the parking lot I think I just talked about your grandmama church that she didn't have time to come to church but she had time to check the preacher about what he said and she sent a message to the preacher she said if by this time tomorrow I don't do the exact same thing that you did to my prophet, the Lord would do something to me. The prophet had just came down off of Mount Carmel doing great things and seeing God do great things, but he ran because he was afraid of what she said she would do. He was tired of representing God. Watch this, Jarvis. And the people didn't respond to what he did. It's going to be quiet in here today. That, that, that he did something that God called him to do. But Johnny, he didn't see the effects of what he thought he would get. Let me help us today with, with expectation. Now, now, many of us have issues with how people act. Uh, people don't say thank you when you give them your hard-earned money. People make you upset because they don't reciprocate the type of love that you give. Can I give you a new definition of how we be angry? You ain't angry by how they act. You angry by what you expected. 
It's our expectations that makes us downcast. It's our expectations to make us feel like we ain't working where we need to work. It's our expectations to make us feel like the car we prayed for ain't stunt no more. Because we feel like we gotta keep up with the Joneses and the Washingtons because we ain't never satisfied. Elijah was the man. But I want you to understand the human aspect that even if God used you, you still get tired sometimes. And your physical body can be tired, but when your spirit gets tired, there's something else going on inside of you. When your soul gets tired, you don't feel like dealing with nobody. When your mind gets tired, you don't even feel like thinking. <laughs> And you turn on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Just give me some, some mindless TV. I don't even want to think about nothing. Let me put on something silly so I can just stare at the dummy tube. I'm just so tired of always trying to work out the next situation. How I'm going to pay these bills off? How I'm going to go back to school? How I'm going to manage my house? What's going on in my body? God, I'm just so tired of life. Tired of this, man. Discouragement will push you in the wrong direction. Let's go ahead and execute this text. The Bible wants us to understand that Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and left for his, left his servant there. Let's go ahead for the first point. The first point is this: he was tired because he denied the power of God by doubting. Once he ran away from what Jezebel said, he didn't believe that God was a very present help in times of trouble no more. He didn't believe the God who had just rained fire down from heaven to lick up the offering. But what he did believe is that somebody that don't like me can harm me. Far too often we tire because we trying to make it other people like us. And I want you to understand that if somebody don't like your big lips, you just gonna have to tell them you can. <laughs> this is how God made me and I'm gonna celebrate myself. If you can't celebrate me, I'm happy the way God made me. Can't nobody wear a big head like I can wear a big head. Nobody walk like a duck like I can walk. God made me exactly in his image and in his likeness. I'm sick of being tired of trying to live up to other people's expectations. You don't preach like a college preacher. You don't dress like a pastor. What a pastor dress like. I ain't concerned with what you wear. I'm concerned with how you lead. Watch this. Elijah was surprised, watch this, that after God used him mightily, he was surprised that the revival didn't work out in his favor. He was expecting for people to carry him on their shoulders and being how glad that they were that he was a representative of the king of God. And he was the man of God that was faithful to bring the word of God. And when the people didn't celebrate him, he felt like he didn't have a friend in the world. I, I wish I could talk to a preacher in here who understands what it's like to be filled of the Holy Ghost on Sunday and don't feel like talking to nobody on Monday. Because the adversary understands if he can make you doubt that God can use you, the very next time that you're supposed to be used, you're going to go off of how you felt. God wants us to understand that there's a lesson in him running from what somebody said. Many of us are in a position to where we are doubting God and we still so tired because we running not from things of today, but we running from things that happened yesterday. Lord have mercy. We tired. Somebody in your seat on your row is tired because you still running from what happened to you two decades ago. You still running from the people that walked away from you just last week. But you tired not only because of what happened to you, you tired because you keep playing the scenario over and over and over and over in your mind. How did this happen to me? I was playing for a fool. I never 
never be a fool like that again. That'll never happen to me. And you wonder why you tired because you're not living, you still tripping on the past. I'm, 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 I'm tired, I'm, I'm exhausted. You know that sometimes when you catch a plane, they tell you that you can only carry on so much luggage. Why do I only get to carry two bags of luggage on a plane? This big old plane, I should be able to put as much bag as I want on the plane. Well, sir, it's not about how much you bring on, but the plane only has so much capacity. But if everybody on this plane bring on extra baggage, the plane is not going to be able to take off. Get us together, Pastor. It's somebody sitting in your seat on your roll and your hands are tired because you carry an old baggage. God is saying today, check your bags at the door. You carrying around too much old stuff. You carrying around stuff that don't matter no more. You got bell bottoms in your suitcase. Don't nobody wear bell bottoms no more. Why you still got all that old stuff in your hand? I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm comfortable blaming everybody else. But you blaming everybody else about what they did to you. But let me help you with what they say today, these days. That, that, that somebody is, is leasing property in your head and they ain't paying you no rent. You up in the middle of the night thinking about folks that ain't thinking about you. Somebody that moved on and got married, and you still checking their Facebook to see when they break up. You better move on, girl. He moved on. That's my man. The Lord told me what the Lord told you wrong. That's somebody else's man. Stop praying on somebody else's husband. He ran because he doubted God could, could secure him. He ran because he doubted that God could protect him. He ran because he was afraid. He looked more into what a man said than what God had promised. Psalm 27, 1 and 2 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me, somebody shall dare to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes. Watch this, y'all. Stay in the text. They stumbled and fell. Can I help us today? Don't you want to see the Lord prepare a table in the presence of your enemies? You can't see it if you run in the other way. On Sunday, we want God to fight our battles. But we jelly belly and won't stand in there and fight for ourselves. How you know God is a present help if your back is against all your enemies? You running elbows and knees. Why won't you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? Don't, don't just believe God on Sunday. I need you to stand still in your closet. I need you to stand still in your living room. I need you to stand still as you anoint your babies when they sleep. I need you to stand still on the first day of school. Walk through that school. Rub the hallways down. If my babies go here, I'm anointing this whole place. Watch it. When you discourage, discouragement sounds just like depression, don't it? Amen. Jarvis, you see how quiet they got right there? The Lord just stepped on 20 people's toes. That, 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 that. Nobody likes to say they're depressed. We dress it up and say stuff like, you know, I'm going through something. I'm going through a little something and the devil busy, uh-huh. But I want you to understand that the, 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 the depression, watch it, y'all. The Bible says that then he went on a, alone unto the wilderness. He wanted to be by himself. He traveled all day. And then he sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. This is words. Watch this. I know nobody here would say nothing like this to God, but we're just going to pick on Elijah real quick. I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. 
for I'm no better than my ancestors or my fathers who have already died. What's the point, JB? Depression will dilute your dreams. Depression is sneaky. It'll come up on you because you expected something to make you feel better. And when that expectation is thwarted, now you feel like you're a failure. Somebody better talk back to me. If I'm going through trouble, God must have turned his back on me. If I'm not feeling good in my body, all them years of working out must have been in naught. My wife arguing with me, so we must be about to get a divorce. Oh my God, I'm depressed. Watch it, watch this, watch this. Let's pull these scriptures up. These are indicators of depression. Depression will make you tired of people. You know, I just like to spend time by myself. No, no, no. Sometimes you know that people might ask these questions. But depression makes you to the point where you don't want nobody to ask you nothing. Mm. Bible says when he left in fear, he had a servant with him. He left his servant and he went on by himself. So he went to one town with a purpose that I'm giving up the people that God sent me. Watch this. As an indicator that I'm done with ministry. God sent his people out two by twos. When God gives you a purpose and a plan, he'll never make you do it by yourself. So if you believe God has called you to do something and you're all by yourself, I need you to pray about that a little bit longer because God will always send you somebody to hold your arms up. Somebody to say, hold on, let's go back to the word on that one. Somebody to say, you know, I don't know if that's the right plan. If you want to be by yourself, you might have the wrong agenda. Watch it. He left his servant indicating, I'm done with ministry. I'm going to continue to walk away from my trouble, but I'm also walking away from God. Lord, have mercy. Depression. Depression will direct your thoughts towards death. Y'all keep talking to me. Depression will direct your thoughts towards death. Watch this. It's not the fact that you want to die. You just want the pain to die. You want the frustration to die. You want the loneliness to die. You want the fact that nobody understands you to die. So when he used the words, God, I just want to die. He wasn't saying, I'm ready to leave from this place. But what he's saying is, yesterday I was living for you. Today I didn't get what I expected. I'm finished. Or, I'm tired of this. Here we go. Jesus said it this way. 10 and 10 and John. The thief comes that to accept, to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Watch this. I want the people that's dealing with that D word to hear this scripture, John 10 and 10. B portion. Jesus says it this way. I have come that they may have life. I want that to marinate. And that they may have it more abundantly. So I don't just want you to get up out the bed and breathe. I want you to spring up out the bed and know that if he woke me up, he has something for me. If God was done for me, he would have let me sleep to death. But since he woke me up, I got to say thank you. And since he gave me my right mind, he must have a plan for me today. Why don't you ask God in the morning? What's the plan for the day, Master? What do you have for me to do since you woke me up on time? What is it that you want me to do? Don't lay in the bed all day just because you ain't got nowhere to go. Get up and make up some place to go. Don't tell me you ain't got nothing to do. I got something for you to do. Don't lay in the bed all day understand why you can lay in the bed all day, but when people ask you if you got something to do, you say, yeah, I'm busy. Stop lying. Right. You tired.
tired and you've given up. You just know how to put on the happy face to make everybody think that everything is well. Smokey Robinson made a song that I love about this. It's called The Tears of a Clown. That every morning I feel like staying in the bed, but when I drug myself to the mirror, I painted on a happy face. But on the inside, I feel like getting under the bed. I know I'm preaching to somebody in here. The Lord says it this way, get up, wash your face. I want you to wash your face. Why do I want you to wash your face? First, get that eyelash off your cheek. Secondly, I want you to wash off everything that you brought from yesterday. If you don't wash your face, you're going to bring yesterday into today. You're going to go to work and they say, girl, your face is big. They're going to say, I left on everything from last night. You nasty. Said, wash your face. And after you wash your face, I need you to anoint yourself. Meaning that I know that you have a better continence, but you're just dragging your way through life because you're tired. And when you're tired, watch this, hold your spiritual seatbelts, you look tired. Amen. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. Praise him. <laughs> Did he wake you up this morning? I'm here, right, Pastor? Shouldn't I get some brownie points for just coming to church? No! You should want to come and get a word from the Lord. You should want to give praise and worship to the one that gave you everything you have. You should want to fellowship with the saints. You should want to go and learn how do I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Should nobody have to make you come and worship your king and your Lord. You should want to get out the bed early. 7.15. Say somebody open the door. I got to praise the Lord. I got to say thank you. I got to lift up holy hands. And sometimes I just don't feel like it. Because I'm tired. Can I give you one point and I'm moving on? He says, put on the garment of praise. So sometimes you got to put your fake praise face on until you get ready to praise. You might say, I'm going to stand up because crazy preacher going to say something. But after you stand up, something start happening in your hands. Something start happening in your feet. Your back start feeling better. You say, you know what? God's been good to me. After all I've been through, he still has blessed me. And I still got joy. Look, look, look. Look. Elijah, after he dropped off his servant, Remember, he had the mind that I'm done with ministry. So look at this. Would you say that he was walking doubtful road? Sometimes we forget that God still has his hand on us when things get hard. The rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. You trying to tell me just because I get sick, I'm not saved? You trying to tell me if I fall off my bike two years in a row, God don't got his hand on me? No. That means I didn't die when I fell off the bike. So that's proof that God has his hand on me. What kind of crazy theology is that? If that happened, you can't be saved. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because the devil wants you to think that if you go through something, God's not with you. I just want to remind you of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they stood up for God and still got put in the fiery furnace. Do I have a witness in here? Some people might say, the more I declare Jesus, the more hell I go through. I was praying with somebody I love, and they was talking to me at work. And I said, man, it's busy up in there, brother. What 
what you do for a living? He tried to play it off by us because he, he think I couldn't latch on to that. And Jarvis, most people in this church understand if I ask, I already know. So the thing is, he says, uh, what you talking about, man? You want to pray again? I say, yeah, we're going to pray in a minute. Where you work at? He says, uh, uh, hold on one minute. I, I, let me get back to you. The brother told me where he worked. And the Bible told me that Christians should not put their feet in places where the adversary does the most of his work. I just want to help somebody in here. He didn't have to quit, but he talked to the man of God. And the man of God says, what are you doing there? And then they told him he couldn't work there no more. We ain't talking about us. We're not glorifying ourselves. What I'm saying is, if you live to God's standards, God will not let you prosper in the wrong territory. Y'all thought I was off the text. Elijah ended up walking to the same place that the children of Israel walked in. A trip that only should took a certain amount of time, but because of that D word, Brother Baez, because of doubt, it took them a lot longer to get where God had already promised. Thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, that you and I have walked around our promise for years uh, because we're trying to do it our own way. But God has already told you to believe and move into the land of milk and honey, but we don't believe that God can give it to us that easy. So we doubt God and believe our own understanding. Elijah was walking down this road of disbelief. And it's a symbolism to the words that he spoke. He says, I was not successful just like my fathers were not successful. The Bible is so ingenious. Well, the, your ancestors were not successful because their heart was full of doubt. And that generation couldn't move in. That whole generation had to die because they all was doubters. There's some things that you can't take from your daddy and your mama. <laughs> There's some things that you can't take from Big Mama. Big Mama said a lot of good stuff, but she said some crazy stuff too. That's the word. That's the word. He was in a place where he needed to be refreshed. But he was walking in a wilderness that could not meet his natural needs. He ended up at a broom tree that had little moisture. So when you're walking away from your assignment, you in your feelings. Somebody say, yeah, that's me. When you tired, you be in your feelings. The, the worst time to make a decision is when you tired. The worst time that you want to quit New Found Hope Community Church, don't call me and say you tired of me or the ministry because I'm going to say I need you to get some rest and I need you to pray about that thing. Don't make a decision when you tired. But I will inform you, I will continue to get on your nerves. I will continue to frustrate you. But please don't make that decision when you tired. I want you to make an informed decision when you got all your energy, when the Bible of the Lord is talking to you, per the word that you're reading. Don't just move because you're tired. Because what's going to happen is your new residence, you'll get tired of that place quick too. Mm. Here, the Bible says that he laid up residence around this type of tree, and this tree couldn't give him what he needed. But watch this. God will take the place that you go and use something natural to give you a supernatural refreshment. He will give you a supernatural refreshment when you try to use your natural enhancement. Many of us try to use our intellect. We try to use our cognitive and understanding. We try to lean on our certificates on the wall. But sometimes you just need to close your closet door and say, Father, I need thee. I need thee. Oh, talk to me, God. Talk to my situation. Talk to my body. Talk to my mind, talk to my hands, talk to my feet. I don't know all the scriptures, but I know you. I need you to get me back on the right path. 
I'm tired in my soul. I'm tired in my body. I'm getting tired of people. I'm tired of being tired. Lord, I need you to recharge me. I need you to show me a new and a better way. Look at the blessing. I'm in my seat. Look at the blessing. Verse 5 says, then he lay down and slept. Okay, all my sleepy saints miss they shout. You've been looking for your excuse in the Bible. Here it is. Then he lay down and he slept. Under the broom tree. Watch it. But as he was sleeping, the angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. I got a scripture, boys. I got a scripture. Go to sleep, eat. Go to sleep, eat. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. <laughs> he looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones in a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Lord, have mercy. Then the angel of the Lord came back again. Can I talk to some Bible readers in here? Most of the time you see an angel come forth and give a message. You only see that angel in that season one time. But what kind of anointing does the Lord have on your life that the angel of the Lord has given you the same message over and over and over? Can I fix it? When your spiritual earthly under shepherd angel gives you the same message, you say, he in my business. Why come he can't preach something else? I want you to stop looking at them and start looking at you. God, why is that scripture feel like it's just ripping my heart out of my chest? That must be the scripture prescribed for me in the season that I'm in. Why you keep talking about forgiveness? Ooh, stop talking about forgiveness. Because you got a hard heart. I digress. Here's the point. He was tired. But God delivered him in the middle of his despair. <laughs> Can I fix it? If you told your boss that I'm done and you walked off and never told him where you was going, I'm telling you, you're going to be fired. Your boss is not going to track you down, give you lunch, say take a nap on the clock, give you dinner, and say go back to sleep, and then say, listen here, I need you to rest. Nobody but God situation where you feeling yourself where you feel like can't nobody understand you everybody on my nerves I'm just gonna quit but God knows how to slice through all our pride and just give us some grace where my mama's at in here you know when your baby is on that other stuff when I say baby let me be clear. I ain't talking about no 28-year-old baby. Let's stop that. When I say baby, don't be rolling your eyes at me. When I say baby, I'm talking about five and under. Y'all with me? I see a mama nurse one now. Watch it, watch it. Mamas know when their baby is tripping, and mamas know when their babies is tripping because they tired. Daddies, we stupid. I'm finna help us. <laughs> Daddy come home from work. Shut up! I come down there one more time, one more thing. Shut up! Man, we just went quiet. Mamas have trained ears to know the difference between bad and bad because I'm tired. Everything that Elijah did, looking like he walked away from God, a loving father had the wisdom to recognize all the 
foolishness that you've said thus far is not coming from your heart. It's coming from a tired place. Somebody just missed their shout. Everything you said while you was tired, God didn't hold it against you. That should be a praise. Everybody that you gave up on because you was tired, God not going to hold it against you. He just said, you just need a nap. You just need a nap. I wish I could give y'all some theological nugget right now where y'all can post and tweet. But I want you to hear this today. When you find yourself the most frustrated, when you find yourself the most irritated, when you find yourself feeling like your shoulders are touching your ears, I want you to go in the refrigerator and put a piece of cheese and some crackers, bite that thing, go upstairs and take a nap. Before you tell somebody else to pack their stuff, because this is your house, go take a nap. <laughs> the next time somebody grab your keys, when y'all mad, you better take your car. <laughs> go take a nap. Because you ain't really tripping. You tripping because you're tired. I'm tired of this. Where y'all think all these beautiful love songs came from in the 80s? Somebody was tired and tripping. And then they got some rest and wrote a song. Baby, go on to me. delivered him in the midst of his despair. Watch it. When the angel told him to eat, he ate. Can I talk to the church right now? He, he gave him the bread to eat. Can I get real preachy? When you tired, you need to eat the bread of life, the word of God. You need a word to speak to your tired soul. He says, drink, and I want you to drink what I give you. Drink up what the Holy Spirit provides for you. Drink what God has told you to drink, not what you want to drink. You get tired and you want E and J. You get tired and you want Bombay Sapphire. You get tired and you want White Hennessy. But I need you to start drinking what the Lord tells you to drink and go to sleep. I'm in my seat. Look at the wisdom of God. I only gave you a portion of what you need. But when you wake up from being obedient, I got something else for you. After you sleep off what I gave you, I got some more for you to eat. Why? Because where you going, you can't handle it on an empty stomach. The reason the adversary is making your thoughts so cynical is because he wants you to abort the mission before you assume the assignment. The adversary wants you to quit before you get going. The adversary has attacked every man that has preached the five for five in this church. Everybody that stood up and proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ for five minutes been catching hell for five months. If the devil can discourage daddy, the whole house in trouble. This ain't no marriage ship now, but mamas, you gotta be wise. If he slam the door wrong, take the kids in the basement. Who book door are you slamming? <laughs> Men were created to fight. Hear me, I don't condone no violence, but listen to me. It don't always have to be physical. Men were created to, to joust. Say amen loud, Scott. Men were created to argue. That's why we quiet until. Now you're gonna get the whole year of my quiet. Get back to this 
The Bible clearly wants us to understand that his nourishment came from his obedience. Because he ate, he was able to go further. Because he went further, he was reminded of what he was called to do. Sometimes we don't want to walk away from God. We just so tired, we forget who we are. We forget that we are the redeemed. We forget that we are the chosen generation. We forget that we are the head and not the tail. We forget that I am not the least, I am the most. You forget that God chose me, that God picked me out, that God called my name, that he commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Sometimes when you're tired, you forget how much God loves you. He got up, he drank, and he was given enough strength. Somebody say enough. I'm so tired, but God gave me enough. Can I get a enough praise in here? I'm so tired of being broke, but God gave me enough. I'm so tired of being by myself, but God gave me enough. I know how to have fun by myself. I'm so tired of not having a job, but I ain't been outdoors yet. He knows how to give us enough. Enough to continue in this journey. Watch it. God fed him twice. And he walked for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't think we understand that. Some of us can't go from drive through to drive through without getting hungry. In a car. He was walking and he didn't just eat a cake that he made, but he ate something that God gave him. And when God gives it, it's good. I, I want us to understand the importance of rest. If you rest, you are honoring God. If you rest, you are emulating God. Oh, you want me to give you some word on that? The Bible said that God rested on the seventh day, not because he needed rest, but he was showing us that rest was important. It's important to take inventory. It's important to rest your mind. It's important to unplug from social media. It's important to refresh your soul. It's important to lay around the house in your wife beater with your kids. It's important to, to make some memories. It's important to rest. But we've been so conditioned that we got to hustle hard. You got to hustle hard. You got to get it. But if you hustle so hard, you can't live to enjoy it. Mark 6 and 31 says, and he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. Ministry is heavy. There were some people that love us, Brother Jairus. We had a black party a couple weeks ago, and people was getting mad because Pastor wouldn't eat. But I have to learn how to stop doing what God called me to do and replenish so I can continue to do what God called me to do. Transparency. People say that you can't stay out in this hot sun talking to all these people and preach tomorrow. You got to eat something. And after four or five ladies stopped and came by, they sent the general over. The general had a bottle of water, a bottle of Gatorade, and some nachos. And she said, if you don't eat right now, you so-and-so? I said, yes, ma'am. Here's the wisdom. She says, I see you out here in front of them, but you coming home to me. You got to put something in to sustain not just your church, but to sustain your first ministry. Lord, have mercy. I told the kids to go to kids care. She says, eat up, son. You need your energy. Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon, take, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Who, who are we talking about in this instance? I, I, I just want to remind you that even Jesus got tired. Even Jesus got tired. There was people always pulling on him. And he would always steal away to pray. He would say, go into the boat. I'm going to go into the mountains so we can disperse the multitudes. Uh, do I have any Bible readers in here? I'm trying to close right now. Put me in C sharp. Uh, okay, no organs. Luke 22 and 39 says it this way. Jesus went out to a usual place called the Mount of Olives. Uh, and his disciples followed him. On reaching this place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw behind them, knelt down and prayed. This is what he said. Y'all ready for his prayer? Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Watch the text. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him and ministered to him and strengthened him and ministered to him. Why? Because he was tired. When you're tired, you need to call on the name of the Lord. When you weary, you need to give it to Jesus. And the Bible says, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer, he went back to his disciples, pay attention to the text, and they were asleep, exhausted from sorrow. The Bible says, why are you sleeping? He asked them, get up and pray that you do not fall into temptation. If you have a sleepy lifestyle, it's easy to fall into temptation. If you're tired, you can't resist the adversary. If you're weary, you can't hold up the shield of faith. If you don't know where your help come from, you don't know how to pray. I'm trying to close right now. He said, Father, if it's your will, uh, that portion of the prayer was Jesus in his flesh. Uh, if it's your will, let this cup pass away from me. Translation, I'm done with my ministry. But he continued to pray because his faith would let him rely on his flesh. He says, not my will, but thy will be done. Even if I'm tired, even if I'm ragged, I'm still going to hold up the bloodstained banner. Even if I don't know where my next meal is going to come from, I still got to represent Jesus. I still got to press on. I still got to go. After Jesus got up from Gethsemane, he said, my betrayer cometh. And Judas kissed him on the cheek. They took my Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall. That was illegal, y'all. They whipped my Jesus all night long. They pulled the beard from his face. But he was tired, but he kept on going. They made my Jesus with his whip the back carrying his own crossbeam. I know he was tired, but he kept on going. They made my Jesus lay out in the hot sun. He died a criminal's death. I know he was tired, but he kept on going. My Jesus let him put spikes in his hand, spikes in his feet. They put a spear in his side. I know he was tired, but he kept on going. He laid his head in the locks of his shoulders. He says, Father, I commit my spirit unto thee. He says, I give up the ghost. My Jesus died up there on that hill. My Jesus died up there on that hill. He didn't give up. He gave up. My Jesus didn't give up. He gave up the ghost. The Bible says he stayed dead all day Friday. The Bible says he stayed dead all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, my Jesus got up with all power in his hands. So 
Afrocentric power. Demon chasing power. Homosexuality changing power. Jesus has all power of life and death. He holds the keys of Hades in his hands. No man can come to the Father but by the Son. You can't meet God without Jesus. So I just want to encourage somebody, even when you get tired, give it to Jesus. Even when you get lazy, give it to Jesus. He said, give it to me. I'll carry your burdens. Give it to me. I'll carry your pain. Give it to me. I'll carry your sorrow. Why? Because I love you. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, I've been running for Jesus for a long time. And I ain't tired yet. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. And I ain't tired yet. Watch it. I might get tired in it, but I ain't never getting tired of it. He says, when you are weak, then I am strong. My grace is sufficient for you. But every trial in your life, I've already made a way. I just need you to stop doubting. I need you to stop speaking life to depression. I need you to start lifting up holy hands and worshiping God all by yourself. The adversary wants you to stay in the bed because if you stay in the bed, you can't fulfill your assignment. If he can convince us to stay in the bed, we ain't gonna do what God told us to do. He said crazy stuff. Like you ain't got the right clothes to do that. What they gonna say about your hair? All right? We gotta be in about the business that God knows how many hairs we got on our head. And we gotta have radical faith. If you want long hair, why you ain't asking God for it? We believe God for everything else. If you want it laying down your back, either go buy it or ask God for it. Either way, don't let that depress you. Do something. Do something. Faith without works is. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. I, I, I feel like going on. I, I, I kind of feel like worshiping. But I think about, I mean, I'm tired of these.